we should have done in East Timor, but did too late, uh, work with the Indonesian government too, as we should have and did, but with the Cambodian government, that they learn the values of human rights and religious freedom, that also there is a danger that this will be reduced. And I would hope that Jim would offer an amendment with me in the appropriation, Mr. Moran, yeah. in the appropriation process when the bill comes up next year to zero this out. If They're appropriated and I'm on rule, so we're all covered. So, <laughs> so uh, with that, uh, one, we'll ask the embassy to meet you as you land. Uh, we'll do a letter to the ambassador to ask if they sort of watch you over you. Uh, 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 that doesn't mean we have to agree with everything. She may have some differences, obviously, but to meet with you and let the Cambodian government know how your security is very, very important in our government. And uh, lastly, we will uh, contact Secretary Gates with regard to that to that aid. And it would be my hope that you know, perhaps someday a couple of us could visit there, but there would be a reception uh, at the American Embassy, where all of you who are dissidents and everything could come in, and the embassy would feel like it is an island of freedom that you see when you see that American flag. You know, that there'll be something in there advocating for you has been the history of this country. So I, I thank you, Mr. McGovern, and I thank Mr. Moran for, for asking for the hearing. Thank you very much. Don't mess around with Frank. You want to respond to this? Yes. Um, Again, I wish to thank the members of Congress, um, Congressman Wolf. I am a U.S. citizen, and uh, Ambassador Carol Rutley has provided me with escort when I leave the country, so I'm grateful for that. But for those of my, my compatriots who are not U.S. citizens, I don't think um, the U.S. Embassy has been, it can be, it's their asylum. Um, because in the past it has been that case that, um, that Cambodians are not quite welcome when they seek asylum. I wish to bring the attention of my colleague, a member of parliament, uh, Honorable Ho Ban, who is now in Denver. Uh, his case is like my case. His immunity was uh, uh, lifted the same day as mine for speaking again just making a comment about uh, the military. Uh, his trial was um, on the 9th of September, which is two days ago, and uh, very likely he's going to be found guilty. He is now in Denver. His uh, status, he came as a visitor. Um, his visa will expire uh, very soon. But we, as members of parliament, we are elected by the people of Cambodia. We want to go back to serve our people. We, we are not here to seek asylum. We are here to say to you, please, uh, we, you are elected by the people as well. Can you imagine if you could not go to this constituency, your own constituents who are crying for help? You cannot imagine that. And for me, for my colleagues who are in parliament, who are in opposition, we put our lives out there. For my own case, I would not pay the fine. I would rather go to jail. And that is not because I do not respect the rule of law. But if there were a rule of law, I would not, my case would not even come up. And I want to go to um, jail just to hope to my people, to the people of Cambodia, who now live in total fear of prosecution. Thank you. Thank you very much. May I have a yeah. seat? Yeah. Uh, thank you for giving me another question. Uh, I'm, I'm learning that uh, the U.S. is going to discuss about the trade, new trade policy. Uh, as I mentioned earlier that uh, Cambodian economy mainly based on the government and textile industries. So why, why should the U.S. include Cambodian in the trade policies with the duty status as amendments with the condition? So it could be another one improvement that uh, the, the, the most of the product from the textile and garment industry is imported through U.S. And EU, it's not to shine. Right. Yeah. So this is one. one I think it's a, a very good point. I just want to stress that the point of this commission 
you know, is to try to raise the issue of human rights in all of our policy discussions, not just in terms of military aid, but also in terms of economic aid and our trade agreements. What we are trying to emphasize here is that the human rights matters and that it's an important part of our foreign policy. And you know, this hearing today, you know, what we want to stress is that we want a good, strong, and productive relationship with the government of Cambodia. But it becomes much more difficult and complicated if, the, if, a, if, a, if a standard of human rights is not upheld. It becomes difficult when there's a culture of community. The community, um, because it becomes difficult when the judicial system doesn't work and people are arbitrarily thrown in jail or people can't express their, their, what, what's on their mind. So, you know, this, what we want to do here ultimately is to persuade the uh, leaders of Cambodia to actually understand that human rights is important. And by respecting human rights, there are benefits that come you know, from the United States as a result of that. So, at this point, I want to yield to, again, the, the uh, inspiration for this hearing today, uh, are my colleague Jim Moran. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. And uh, I appreciate your genuine uh, commitment. I'm glad you chaired this caucus. And um, uh, again, I, I will mention it was uh, Ms. Lita Black that uh, brought uh, Lucifer to me and uh, uh, made a, uh, a compelling case, uh, but it didn't take much convincing to, for you to hold a hearing, Mr. Governor, and that's, and that's typically the, uh, the case. And again, this is appropriate for the Congressional Human Rights Caucus to address. Uh, Cambodia is an interesting situation because it's not Burma, it's not Sudan, it's not as bad as many other countries uh, where human rights uh, are, uh, are, are clearly uh, trampled every day. It's a country that has made progress, uh, certainly in the last 20 years. Uh, but something has happened in the last year or two uh, uh, where um, uh, a series of uh, these um, defamation uh, 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 prosecutions have occurred, which are clearly politically inspired, uh, really trumped up charges that would be laughable if they did not entail serious consequences. Uh, there's, uh, the, the, there's little question that the fact that uh, the, the government controls the courts and, uh, uh, is a, um, is a too uh, easy an opportunity to uh, abuse civil rights. And the courts, of course, are, uh, seem to have a history of corruption. So I want to ask you a, a little about how this uh, occurred, why you think uh, this is the case. Because I understand that uh, despite some irregularities, uh, uh, Hansen probably would have been elected if there had been a uh, uh, no irregularities whatsoever. If it had been a completely democratic process, he still nevertheless would have been elected because I think people sense that there has been improvement, uh, that the, uh, the economic, uh, the, the, the living conditions in Cambodia have improved. Uh, so we want to find those aspects of the government that we can work with to improve, but we've got to condemn uh, the attitude that has uh, led to the necessity of having uh, such a human rights hearing. Uh, and uh, Mr. Wolf and Mr. McGovern have suggested uh, the leverage that uh, Dr. Richardson uh, uh, proposed, and it, it would seem to be quite appropriate. We ought not be facilitating that. There is another uh, point of leverage, perhaps, and that's the ASEAN uh, the, the organization, the, uh, the coalition of uh, basically Southeast Asian uh, countries, uh, that um, uh, they have gained some credibility. And I think it's, uh, uh, it's important that um, to, to recognize that and the fact that they recently identified 
uh, some um, 